Welcome back to Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020. Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 with the New Hampshire Wildcats. Uh, we just finished our, what was this, our fourth season, fifth season? Um, we are in Conference P. I played through the regular season. Uh, last we left, we had just beaten number, well, at the time they weren't ranked, but right now it's an e- looking like an even better win as they are number 25, Clemson. We beat them by 20. We then lost to Grand Canyon in the second round. And we played a much tougher non-conference schedule this season. You can see we talked about Clemson. We played at Dayton. Uh, we played at Texas Tech. We played at UConn at Auburn, and we actually beat Auburn in Auburn, 71-63. to We hung with UConn, hung with Texas Tech, um, weren't able to win those games, but uh, overall it was an okay season, 19-9, and um, 11-5 and in the regular season, um, or 11-5 in the conference tournament, sorry, and we are at conference tournament time. So we finished... Uh, I keep bouncing back and forth between this and Pro Basketball 2021, and a lot of the buttons are in different spots, so I have to you know, reacclimate myself every time I, I jump in. So we finished second in the conference behind Cal Poly. We were 11-5, and five, tied with North Florida and Idaho. Uh, finished, again, 19-9 and nine on the season. We were 10-1 and one at home, 9-8 and eight on the road. Had an RPI of 90, so... I think we need to win the the tournament to have any shot of getting into the NCAA. I think we'll end up in a a postseason tournament either way, but uh, it would be nice to get another shot at the NCAA tournament. Seven and three in our last ten. Now for some of the bad news. Bad news is we are currently without Ike Carter for presumably the rest of the season. Our senior point guard is out with severe back pain for the next 49 days. So uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing Ike at all again the rest of the season. We've moved Ben Montgomery into the starting lineup. Let's take a look at the team's stats. We'll look at some of what happened there. So Joe Petaway, and we were a very senior-heavy team. Uh, You can see, what, two, four, five of our top seven scorers were all seniors. So next season could be a bit of a challenge, but... Petaway led us 12 points, just under seven rebounds. Ben Montgomery started most of the year off the bench, was second in our team in scoring. Um, So we're going to need his offense in the postseason. He averaged 11 a game off the bench. Carter Roy, 10 points, three rebounds. Uh, I Carter, 10 and five assists. Joe Cook uh, off the bench, but he played 20 minutes a game. Uh, Eight points, six rebounds. He's going to be playing more. Now that Carter is out, I'm, I'm going to be playing some some bigger lineups with Petaway and Cook. Uh, Alvin Pyluzic broke his nose, but he's playing through it, averaging 8, 5, and 3. Keith Parker, a senior, averaging 4.5. Joan Lazaro uh, got some playing time this year, averaged 3.5. He's probably going to play a whole lot more next year. Freshman Hayward, excuse me, Hayward O'Neal, 2 points, 2 assists. He's likely to be my starting point guard next year, along with Montgomery in the backcourt. Haynes was a walk-on who played in 23 games for us. So next year we've got uh, Harmon, Sidelnikov, and Karaza all coming coming in, which is going to help. Uh, Harmon is a three-star, three-and-a-half star, four-star. Three four uh, he's a three-star, three-and-a-half star. Gleb, Sidelnikov, and then Karaza is a two-star, or one-and-a-half star, four-and-a-half star. So uh, we'll have some players jumping in for us. So... That's kind of where we stand on a recruiting front. Uh, We've got some people who are interested. We haven't landed anybody yet. Um, We have five open scholarships for next year. Uh, So I need to hope that we can land some of them. I don't even, I think this this guy's okay because I believe that all we need is somebody to have an 800 on their S8, on 900 minimum. Shoot, well that's a problem. So I may as well... That's a huge problem. Is there anybody else? So right now we've got Neil Cross, Bobby Deli, who are interested. Let's make sure we've got scholarships to cross. We do, so that's good. We're number nine on his list. Let's give him a call. See if we can get his information on facilities. Uh, 
conference prestige, location. All right, so we've got everything we need from him now. Um, I, you know, I would love to be able to land this guy, but I don't think his uh, SAT scores are going to be any good unless he I don't know if they take them more than once. So I don't want to revoke the scholarship just yet in case they can. Um, I can't call Jacobson because my call list is full and I don't believe you can pull people off of your call list. So it is what it is at this point. Um, so yeah, so these are the people that are interested. We haven't landed any recruits yet. Um, we have a couple of interested nationally ranked recruits, which would be nice to get. These are the people we have our scholarship offers out to right now. So I think we're ready to play. We're going to go into the conference tournament. We get a bye in the first round. We'll see who we play. And one of our conference, one of our, our our goals from the the board this year is to win 20 games. So it would be nice to win uh, one game in the postseason tournament here to get to that magic number 20. So I'm going to sim ahead. Um, hopefully we can play ahead to conference championship. So. We need to beat UC Riverside first. 10 and 18, UC Riverside. And we do. Cool. So there's our 20th win. Obviously, the other... Uh, here, I'll show you, I guess. Uh, if we go to the office. So qualify for the AIT tournament, win the conference tournament, win 20 games, and improve school prestige. Our school prestige is up to a 30, which is good. It was at an 18 previously. We won 20 games. we got two games to go here, and we need... If we make it to the, I wonder if, I hope it doesn't ding me if I make the NCA tournament and don't qualify for this one. So we'll see. So now we're taking on Eastern Kentucky. Let's take a look at the box score for this one. We won 75 63. Carter Roy struggled four fouls in eight minutes. Uh, we were led by Petaway, 16 and 10. Pyluzic had three points and 11 assists. Montgomery with 11. Um, and Greg Henderson, freshman, came in averaging 1.4 a game, scored 10 for us in this one. So that's good. We move on to the semifinals against Eastern Kentucky. And do we win that one? Do we get a shot at the conference championship? We do. We win, uh, we win that one. We move to 21 and 9 now. Who do we play? What was. So we're going to play Moorhead State. Ooh, tight one. We won 80 to 79. Cutter Roy bounced back at 14, 5, and 4. Montgomery with a big game off the bench, 22. Pyluzic had 14, 6, and 6. So uh, made up for a tough game from Petaway. Uh, some good um, production off the bench. So we had 10, 24, 26 of our 80 were from uh, the bench mob, as it were. So we are going to be taking on Moorhead State. Did we play them during the regular season? Uh, I don't see them. No, I don't see them. So it doesn't look like we played Moorhead State. So let's take a look at the inbox. Let's look at the scouting report. So we are expected to win slightly. But it's a pretty average game. We have the advantage at point guard as it has Albin Pyluzic as our point guard. Uh, Montgomery, Carter Roy, Keith Parker, Joe Petaway. Um, they're not a very good defensive team. They give up almost 80 points a game. So hopefully that's good for us. Uh, they're a bit better shooting team. They turn the ball over more. So that should be interesting. So let's go ahead and play this game against Moorhead State and see if we can win the conference tournament and get that automatic NCAA bid. Switch to AI control. We're going to be, so Ryan Freeman, Jeffrey Reynolds in the backcourt, Marcus Campbell, Brandon Garner, Rob Tucker in the front court for Moorhead State. They start four seniors and a freshman. For us, we got Pyluzic and Montgomery in the backcourt, Carter Roy, Keith Parker, Joe Petaway, four seniors and a sophomore for us. So a couple of very veteran teams here. Let's go to the Conference P championship game. Let's see if we can win. So we get a put back by Parker to put us up early 2 0. Moorhead State hits the jumper. 
Turnover. Oh, actually, it looks like a, just a miss and a rebound for Moorhead State. Missed three-pointer. Put back is good. And Montgomery hits a three to put us up a 5-4. 6-5 Moorhead State. Montgomery misses that three-pointer. UNH basketball. In the paint, Petaway misses that one. They said he traveled, and Moorhead State is up three. Foul line jumper from Carter Roy is good. Moorhead State hits that one to put him up three. Turnover by Petaway. And a turnover by Montgomery. And then we come back and Petaway jams it. Jumper by Montgomery is good. He misses the free throw. We go up by a point. Montgomery is a volume shooter. He's already two for five in this one. We're up two. It's a tie game as we turn it over again. Another shot by Montgomery is good, giving him seven. 15, 14, more 16, 15 UNH. Back and forth we go here early in the first half. Moorhead State with a three to put him up to. Montgomery misses that one. We get the offensive rebound. Two free throws by Parker tie the game at 18. Turnover by the Wildcats. It's turnover number four. Miss shot. Moorhead State gets it back. Misses a three. We get it back. And there's another turnover. Bar traveling on John Cook. There's an and one for Montgomery at the line. Moorhead State hits a three, though, to put him up 23-21. What I should have done was gone into my depth charts and limit how much the non-starters played because I really don't want a ton of bench playing, ton of bench play in this one. 13 points for Montgomery already is keeping us in this one. Cook hits two free throws to put us up by a point. Moorhead State hits a three. We turn it over. They hit another three and they're up five all of a sudden. Petaway misses the shot. We get it back. Go in with the two-hand jam, making it a three-point Moorhead State lead. Miss three-pointer. We get the offensive rebound. Jumper from the top of the key by Cook is good. 33-30, to 30, Moorhead State. Missed the and one, but then we get a jumper from Petaway to bring us within a point. Two free throws by Petaway, and we have the lead. Good game so far. Back and forth we go. Two free throws for Moorhead State. Put them up one. We miss the jumper. We get the put back. Foul called. We get the ball back. And there's a jumper by Carter Roy. 36-35. 37-36. Cook to the rim. Misses the easy shot. Moorhead State hits a three. Called. Petaway with the jam. Missed three-pointer. And Parker ties it. 40-40. to 40. Moorhead State has an and-one opportunity. They aren't able to convert, but they take the lead. And there's a bucket by Petaway. 42 all with a minute left in the first half. One out of two at the line. And we turn it over. And Cook lays that one in, and we're up 44-43. to 43. We look for the final shot of the half. Three-pointer from the top of the key by Petaway is no good. And we go into halftime up by a point on Moorhead State. So we'll look at them. They got very spread out scoring. I'll start with their starters. Garner and Reynolds each have six. Freeman with five. Tucker with four points, seven rebounds. Campbell had three. 
off the bench. They were led by Fox, who had seven points on three and three of three of three shooting. Nurse had five, Douglas four, Kincaid three. They shot 17 of 33 from the field, 51%, 6 of 15 from behind the arc, 3 of 5 from the line, 16 rebounds. They turned it over 10 times. For us, we were led by Montgomery, who had 13 points on 5 of 10 shooting in the first half. Carter Roy had 8. Joe Petaway, 6 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 5 steals for our center. Parker with 7. Piluzic had a pair with 3 assists. Off the bench, Cook had 6. Henderson had 2. O'Neal Haynes and Lazaro all played and didn't score. We shot 17 of 35, just under 50%. We're only really 2 of 11 from behind the arc and 8 of 11 from the line. Also had 16 rebounds, and we turned the ball over eight times. So we go into the second half up by one. Moorhead State gets the ball first. Misses their first shot. We turn it over. They turn it over. Three-pointer from the top of the key is no good. Putback is no good. Moorhead State with the baseline jumper. Missed shot again. So we've missed our first four shots. They hit a three-pointer, and all of a sudden, they're up four. We scored the first five points here in the second half. Easy basket for Carter Roy gets us within two. They get an easy basket to go back up four. Petaway in the paint scores. Petaway with double digits now. They had a three-pointer to go up five. We miss a shot there. And that's been the difference. Another three-pointer. They're up eight. And that's been the difference in this one is they're making their threes and we're not. <clears throat> we missed. They get the offensive rebound. One out of two at the line, and it's a nine-point game. There's a two for Parker. There's a three-pointer for Montgomery to get us within four. Cook with the dunk to get us within two. A quick 6 nothing run to get us right back into this one. Cook misses both free throws. An opportunity to tie it. There we go. Cook hits both free throws that time. It's 57 all. 59-57 as it's an 11 and nothing run. They hit a three-pointer to go back up by a point now. And one opportunity is no good for O'Neal. We're up two. We're up four as Montgomery hits the medium range jumper. With 11 minutes left, we are up 64-62. There's another three by Montgomery, giving him 23. Five-point UNH lead. We get a six-point lead as we get one out of two at the line for Lazaro. Sixty-eight, sixty-four. baseline jumper is good. And we turn it over. They miss an easy shot. 70 to 64 as Petaway hits that one. Get the ball right back. Petaway in the paint again. Petaway now with 12 points. And we have an eight-point lead. Looking for that automatic NCAA tournament bid. Turnover by the Cats. Three-pointer for Moorhead State. Getting them within five. We turn it over again. We get it back. We get a couple of free throws from O'Neal, putting us up seven with seven, just under seven minutes left. Tight one here in the championship game. It's our ball. Missed the one and one. Two free throws from Moorhead State. Get them within five. Missed jumper, missed free throws. 74-71 now. They get the ball back. Chance to tie it. They don't. We turn it over. They get a chance to tie it again. They hit a two-pointer to get within a point. And they have a chance to take the lead now. Tie scores. They make one out of two at the line. We turn it over. Oh, this has been a rough stretch of basketball. Petaway hits that one in traffic, though, to get us put us up two. They turn it over. 
And we turn it over. That's 15 turnovers now for UNH. Two missed free throws for Moorhead State. We're down to two minutes left. Montgomery hits that one. Big basket by, by Montgomery to put us up four. Missed jumper, four-point lead with a minute and a half. They hit a three-pointer to get within one. And there's the and one for Cook. Make it 81 to 77. They get multiple opportunities. We get two free throws to put us up six with 30 seconds left. They get an and one. We hit two free throws to put us up five. And it looks like we are going to emerge victorious. We do 85 to 80. Quite a good game here. A lot of scoring. And uh, we win our conference tournaments. So let's take a look at the stats. Leading the way for Moorhead State was Reynolds, who had 20 points, 6 of 11 from behind the arc. Uh, Garner and Campbell each had 10. Tucker only had 4 points, but he had 12 rebounds. Freeman, 7 points, 9 assists. Off the bench, Fox had 10. Kincaid had 7. Nurse with 5. Douglas, 4. Askew, 3. He shot 43% from the field, 12 of 31 from behind the arc, 8 of 14 from the foul line, 35 rebounds. They turned the ball over 13 times. For us, we were led by Montgomery, who had 27 points on 10 of 15 shooting. Petaway with a huge game, 14 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 6 steals, 2 blocks. Carter Roy with 12, Parker 9 and 6, Piluzic only scored 2. Did dish out six assists off the bench. Cook with a big game, 13 points, seven rebounds. Uh, Hayward O'Neal with five. Henderson, two. Haynes had one. Lazaro and Kennedy played and didn't score. We shot 53% or 52.5% from the field. Uh, four of 15 from behind the three-point line. 19 of 31 61% from the foul line. We turned the ball over 15 times. Ben Montgomery was named the player of the game. 26 lead changes. We were tied 11 times. So we win our conference tournament, which is a guaranteed promotion to Conference N. N? N -O, o. Conference O. So let's go ahead and sim ahead. We got to sim ahead. We'll do the tournament show. We'll play the first round, and then that will be that. Keep simming. Just keep simming. We'll see where we fall. We never. We didn't end up ranked at all this year. We never made it into the top 25. We didn't start the season ranked. So I don't suspect we're going to get a 7 seed. We're probably going to be in that uh, 13 to 14 range again. Um, it's just sort of the way it is. So let's take a look. Actually, let's look at recruiting. We haven't touched recruiting in a few days. Let's take a look at all these guys. Let's see if any of them are interested in us other than the ones that were before. Nope, Deli and Cross. And Bobby Deli's not going to, uh, he's not gonna, not gonna make it because he's dumb and that's fine. Um, I keep looking at Nigel Johnson. I don't wanna, necess I don't necessarily want a two-star recruit at this point, but um, he's got good stats, and uh, we need to fill these scholarships. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's go to the selection show. It's going to be loud. Sorry in advance. So let's uh, see where we stand in the selection show. Let's see where we end up. Yeah, like I said, I think we're probably going to end up with somewhere between a 12 and a 14 would be my guess. Uh, we were a number seven seed last year and made it all the way to the uh, uh, Elite Eight. So let's take a look. So Jackson State, LaSalle, uh, Jacksonville, Texas, Rio Grande, Mississippi State, BYU, Alabama, SMU are the play-in games. 
Uh, Gonzaga is the number one overall seed. We'll take on Jackson State LaSalle. Oregon against Central Florida. St. Mary against Cal State Northridge. Indiana against Memphis. Mississippi Louisville in the 512. Missouri Stanford. Bradley Northern Kentucky. LSU against St. Louis in Raleigh. And Columbus, Kansas against Lipscomb. Xavier against Austin P. Iowa takes on Georgia State. New Mexico Baylor. Virginia Commonwealth will take on the winner of Mississippi State BYU. Illinois Davidson. Duke, the number seven seed, Arizona State. Uh, Marquette versus Tulsa. And Columbus in Houston. Washington against Northwestern State. Iowa State versus Sacred Heart. Florida State against New Hampshire. There is our matchup. We'll be taking on the number seven seed, Florida State Seminoles, in the first round. Uh, he wants to believe in New Hampshire. We have a loyal fan base that is going to travel, but he can't see us beating Florida State. That's fair. We'll see how it goes. East Tennessee State, Southern Cal, Purdue against Alabama SMU, Kentucky, Texas Tech, Wake Forest, Flo Miami, uh, TCU against Clemson, Arizona, plays Texas Rio Grande, Jacksonville, Notre Dame, Winthrop, Minnesota versus Cornell, North Carolina, Arkansas State, Pittsburgh versus Vermont in the 512, Maryland against UC Davis, Penn State, Wichita State, and Cal against Belmont. So there we go. So we will be taking on the Florida State Seminoles in the postseason. So let's take a look at them. They were in Conference D. They went 25-7, and 11-5 overall. Uh, we are not expected to have a shot at this at all. Uh, we're a better offensive team. They're a better defensive team. We shoot the ball better than they do. Everything else looks to be pretty even. We have more assists. They have more rebounds, blocks, and steal. We steal. We get a lot more steals per game. Turnovers are even. Their top player is whom? Sean Nixon, 13 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists. So let's jump right in and let's do it. So if we win, that'll be the end of the episode. If we lose, that'll be the end of the episode. Uh, the difference is that next episode will be either second round of the NCAA tournament or it'll be the offseason slash... Um, first game of the next season. Last year ran a little long because we had to play three NCAA tournament games. Or I guess, yeah, three. Round of 64, round of 34. Round of 64, round of 32, the Sweet 16, and then the Elite 8. We'll keep simming ahead here. All right, so here we go. Let's just take a look at our depth chart really quickly. Uh, I really don't care. Uh, I don't. I'm not interested in these guys getting any playing time at all. Uh, it really. I, I mean, Haynes can shoot a little bit, but he's not very good. I gotta get own. I mean, do I just run with seven and just hope that? And I think that's really the key here, right? Just let's, we'll give on, we'll, yeah. We're just going to run O'Neal a couple of times throughout the game just to give um, the starters a bit of a breather. Oops. Um, Lazaro. It's going to the power forward. Carter Roy. Play small forward. I don't want Carter Roy playing the entire first half. That's kind of dumb. Um, but at the same time, we'll do this. We're just going to do that. So we're going to play all of our starters at least 32 minutes a game except for Parker. And that's because I want Cook out there more than him. So, own, so we're basically going to go with seven. Or it's, that this, Even this is more than, than what I would like. We're going with eight here, and I'm not too crazy about that. 
But all right, it is what it is. This is what we're going to go with. We're going to go with this because I don't suspect that we're going to win. Um, but we're going to give it our best. So we take on the number three ranked, or the number three seed, number seven ranked overall, Florida State Seminoles. And this is loud, so I apologize ahead of time. So for Florida State, Nick Crawford, Wahab, Anthony in the backcourt, Sean Nixon, Kevin Dillard, Khalid Edwards in the frontcourt. For us, Piluzic and Montgomery in the backcourt, Carter Roy, Keith Parker, Joe Petaway in the frontcourt. So let's uh, let's get to it. Let's see if we can see if we can have an upset. If we can create an upset here, gonna need the outside shots to fall. They weren't falling in that first game. Parker gets the jumper to put us up two. And we turn it over. Actually, it looks like it was blocked. Missed jumper by Montgomery, but we get the ball back. Loose ball foul. Three-pointer from the top of the key by Pyluzic is no good. Florida State gets the offensive rebound. And we turn it over. I will say that we haven't gotten blown out in, in ages. I remember the first couple of games we played in this series, especially in tournament time. We lost by 20 and 25 points. So hopefully that doesn't happen here. And we can keep this relatively close. Miss jumper by Pyluzic. We're down 9-4 early. Another miss jumper. And it's 11-4. This is what I was afraid of. One out of two at the line for Roy. It's 11-5. We get the ball back. They run a full court press. It's interesting. And we turned it over. Actually, no, it looks like it was another block. Montgomery hasn't gotten off yet as uh, we get a rebound from Parker. Puts that one in to bring us within four. Montgomery had 27 in the last game. Hasn't scored yet in this one. There's a three-pointer from Carter Roy to bring us within a point. One out of two at the line. Cook called for traveling. They get the offensive rebound and hit the jumper. Cook hits that one. 16-12, Florida State. Parker misses the bunny, gets the put back, and we're within two again. Chance to take the lead here with a three. Miss jumper, we get the offensive rebound. Miss jumper, they get the rebound. So two-point Florida State lead. Turn over there. We get it right back, though. And it's a tie game. As Roy hits the shot, it's 16. It's now 18-16, so I don't even get to finish my thought before Florida State retakes the lead. We get the ball back. Miss shot by Montgomery. We get the rebound. Miss jumper, they get the rebound. Miss jumper. Miss three-pointer. Put back is good by Cook. 18-18, 2018 Florida State. Cook hits that one. And we still haven't hit a three-pointer, and we are tied. Actually, I guess we're one of eight from behind the three-point line. Somebody has to shoot it. Miss three-pointer there. Miss put back. We get the ball back. We're down by a point. Turn it over. Shot is blocked. We get it back. Miss jumper. They miss. We get it back. Cook with the and one opportunity misses the free throw, but we are up by a point here. Florida State gets two free throws to put them up by one. 23-26-22 as they hit a three-pointer. We missed the three. We're down four with three and a half left. Montgomery misses that one. He's 0 for 4 shooting, and we're only down 4 points. 
Offensive rebound, miss. Offensive rebound, miss. Offensive rebound, and they make it. So now they're up six. They had three chances on that possession. We missed the shot. Missed the one and one. Missed the three pointer. They hit a three and we're up nine. We're down nine. Ooh, they hit another shot. We're down 11. This is a 12 nothing run. One out of two at the line. We get the offensive rebound, and Carter Roy hits a big three-pointer to get us within seven. Now a nine-point lead. Looking for that last shot. We miss it, and we're going to go into halftime down 35-26. to 26. So we'll start with Florida State. Crawford, 12 points, three rebounds, four blocks. Uh, Edwards and Dillard had four. Anthony had one. Nixon played and didn't score. Singletary with five off the bench. Haywood with four points, eight rebounds for the Seminoles. Broussard with five. Uh, Brinker, Young, Weems played and didn't score for us. We only had two starters score. Carter Roy had nine points. Parker had seven. Petaway, Pilusic, and Montgomery were a combined 0 for 15 in the first half. Pilusic 0 of 7 from behind the three-point line. Cook had 10 uh, two two rebounds and two blocks. O'Neal, Kennedy, Lazaro, and Henderson all played and didn't score. So, Petaway, Pilusic, and Montgomery 0 for 15, and we're only down 9. So, I will take it. We're only 2 of 14 from behind the arc. So, shooting's got to get better, and we need our uh, uh, we need our, our leading scorers to step up here. And no points from our start from our, our leading scorers here in the first half. Uh, jumper there by Parker to get us within... Eight, and then Carter Roy hits a jumper to get us within five. They hit a three to put the lead back up to eight. And there's a three-pointer from Parker to get us within five. Cook with the jumper, and it's a three-point game. So it's the same three players who have done all the scoring for us uh, in the second half that scored for us in the first half. Missed three-pointer. Put back by Cook is good. 40 to 37. 40 to 40 as Carter Roy drills the three pointer. So we're on an, a 12 to 3 run here in uh, the second half. Cook hits that shot and we're up by a point. They get two free throws. We're down by a point. Cook hits the jumper. We're up by a point. So back and forth. Missed three pointer. They get the offensive rebound. Baseline jumper is good. Parker in the paint lays it up and in. 46-45 UNH. 48-45 as Cook jams that one down. We've only had three players score in this game, and we are up by five. That's pretty crazy. Three-point lead now for UNH. Three-pointer from Montgomery. Bang. His first three-pointer of the game. Puts us up six. Cook hits that one, and we're up eight. Miss jumper by Cook. 55-50 as the Seminoles hit a three-pointer. Cook misses that one. 55-52. Quick 5 nothing run. Miss shot by Montgomery. They get another basket, and it's a one-point game all of a sudden. Turnover by UNH. Florida State with a chance to retake the lead. They don't. They miss the three-pointer. There's a missed shot by Petaway. Missed baseline jumper. Petaway finally hits a shot. One of six shooting. They get a three-pointer to tie the game. Montgomery misses another shot. Two missed free throws for Florida State. Petaway misses another shot. And there's a three-pointer by Florida State and then a three-pointer by Pyluzic to tie the game at 60. <clears throat> Two free throws by the Seminoles, and we turn it over. 64-60, 66-60, wow. Missed three-pointer. Florida State is now up eight with six minutes left. That turns it around. We were up by eight points early in the second half here, and that's a three-pointer, and it's an 11-point game. Looks like this one is getting out of hand here just a touch. 
We need a three-pointer here. Or we need a quick basket from somebody. There's a three-pointer from Montgomery to get us within eight. They turn it over. There's a basket for Cook to get us within six. There's a basket from Petaway to get us within four. Another basket by Petaway. We're within two. Oh, they get a basket to get us, put them back up by four. We turn the ball over, down four. Basket by Carter Roy. It's a two-point Florida State lead with a minute and a half left. Miss Jumper, and that could be the nail in the coffin. Montgomery hits a three. It's 79-74. Yep, that's going to do it. 81-74 with 30 seconds left. Roy misses the shot. And that's going to do it. So we drop an opening round matchup to Florida State, 81-74. to uh, We were up by eight points in the second half and just were not able to hold on. Start over on the side of Florida State. Crawford led them with 17. Edwards, 12. Nixon had 11. Dillard had 10 points, 9 rebounds. Nixon also had 7 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 blocks. Anthony had 8. He was only 3 of 16 from the field off the bench. Haywood with 4 points, 12 rebounds. Broussard scored 12 points in 6 minutes for them. Singletary had 5. Weems had 2. Brinker and Young played and didn't score. They shot 41% from the field. They were 19 of 26 from the foul line. That's the difference in the game. They made 19 free throws. We attempted 8. So for us, we were led starter-wise. Carter Roy, 16 points. Parker with his best game in a while, 14 points, 6 rebounds. Um, the rest of our starters got going a little bit. They were 0 for 12 in the – or 0 for 15 in the first half. They finished 7 for 28. So Montgomery had 9 in the second half. Petaway had 6 in the second half. Excuse me. Pilusic with 3. Our big scorer was Cook. He had 24 and 7. Zaro had two, O'Neal, Kennedy, Haynes, Henderson all played and didn't score. So that's the end of our season. So we are going to, uh, let me just look at recruits real quick. Okay, they're all still there. So that's going to do it for this episode. So the next episode will pick up right at the beginning of the new year. And we will... Um, uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do about recruits. Hopefully we will be able to have landed some of these guys. Uh, if not, we're going to go heavy into the transfer portal. Uh, I would rather sign some of these guys so we can play them next season, uh, but we'll see what happens. So as always, guys, leave a like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts, and until we talk again, everybody take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, just wanted to add this bit on here at the end. I forgot to do this. Uh, Look at the conference awards for Conference P. We had the Player of the Year and the Defensive Player of the Year in Joe Petaway as our senior center moves on to other things. Uh, first team uh, all-conference Petaway. Second team all-conference, nobody. Uh, so we're going to advance. And I think that's going to be it. Hopefully we can get some letters of intent here from some of these players. Let's see what we get. We got a couple messages. No, nope, we got nothing. All right, so we qualified, we qualified, we qualified. Uh, our school prestige dropped from a 30 to 28. That's weird. And that's probably because we didn't make the, uh, or we didn't, um, we, we weren't a top 25 team this year. So, um, all right, so that's going to do it for this episode. I just wanted to add that in here. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye.